Hey, this is David with Brazos Valley Barbell, and today I just wanted to talk about deloading and why I use frequent deloads in my training and the training for almost all of my athletes. So first, I just wanted to come up with a definition of, of what I'm calling a deload, and this would not be a, a total break in training, where I think a lot of times when uh, most people think of deloads, they think of a week of very, very low intensities and a very low training volume. And this isn't what, what I do with most of my athletes. We never get to the point where we really need a, a really sharp reduction in training load. Most of the time what I'm doing with, with my athletes and with myself is a, is a four week block with three weeks up and one week down. That, that one week down comes after the hardest training week. And generally in this training week, there would be a, a third week of a progression. So we may be working up to five rep maxes or one rep maxes or three rep maxes or it doesn't matter what it is um, during a hypertrophy block this may be the highest volume week um, including some very high intensity sets of eight or ten reps or those kind of things and the following week is just meant to fully recover from those three weeks of accumulated fatigue and in particular that last week so we set this up this way so that um, from a physical standpoint we we have an objective we we know uh, on that third week, we're really trying to push and we know that next week it's not supposed to be harder um, and that there's going to be a full recovery. So um, th this gives athletes a, a good opportunity to know that they can push hard and they can really try to go as hard as they possibly can and the following week is not going to, to really burn them. If they go hard that on that third week, the fourth week won't feel terrible to them where um, sometimes if if we're if we have a an extended block, if the block is uh, five weeks, six weeks, ten weeks long, whatever, you get in those middle training weeks, and it just really starts to feel like a grind um, from a physical standpoint or a mental standpoint, and and so that's a big reason why I program the three weeks up and one week down is physically I think it gets athletes to put their foot on the gas a little bit, especially when they need to on that third week because they know there's an easy week following it. Uh, the, the mental side of things is a big deal too, is that uh, we've, we've had them ramp up mentally from uh, weeks one, two, and three, and three should be the, the most involved the athlete is in their training. And then the fourth gives them a good opportunity to kind of pull back and to, to take a step back from their training and maybe not take it so seriously. And I think this has been a, a big deal in consistently getting athletes to perform how they need to uh, on that third week or just um, in competition or whatever is we, we practice phases of uh, mental preparation as well. So this can be a big deal when it comes to the competition that uh, we've, we've done a lot of hard training going in and, and the athlete just may be physically and mentally exhausted at that point, but we can learn how to elevate the, the mental preparation through those weeks as well. And so then the, the fourth week teaches athletes to step back and to turn it on when they need to. So that's a, both of those are, are really big components. Now, when we're coming into the execution of this, I, I think the mistake that people make is, is that they go too light for the most part. Is let's say that I, uh, for example, myself, I worked up to a five rep max on my squat of, of 560 for five reps. And so that was a big personal record. And so the, the tendency I think for, for people when they, when they say, okay, the next week needs to be an easy week or a deload week, that following Monday, I still came to the gym, so that was on Friday. Monday, I still pull a single with 745 on deadlift and triples at 705. But as far as my progression from the week before, I had worked up to um, a, basically a double with 785 pounds on my deadlift, followed by, uh, I guess it was a couple, it was a triple at 745, and then it was four triples at 705. So the, the progression there was very much down as far as volume and intensity, but it was something that I was trained to recover from. Um, at the end of the week, which would have been the progression of my squat workout where I did that five rep max. I came in and I hit a single at 585, and then I did three triples at 525, where the week before I had done five pause triples with 535. So I'm trying to make sure that during the, the week of, of my training, um, during that deload week, that I maintain all of that fitness that I gained from that third week. So that's a big deal is that, that um, I know my tendency too is to, to come into week one and, and um, a little bit have a, a mental hangover or physical hangover from some of the, the deloads if I don't try hard enough. So I think this can be an opportunity to stay sharp 
um, in a way that your body is trained to. So um, with, the, with the squat, it was heavier than the squats I had been doing, but it was far less intense. It was a single rather than a, than a set of five. And it was something that I've, I'm, I'm accustomed to doing because I train with high intensities for the most part. So this is a, a big reason why I think it's a big mistake where athletes are not tracking their volume and tracking their intensity, tracking their uh, relative or their relative intensity, proximity to failure, those kind of things. So in all of my programming, we, we set these up and we track all these variables so that we can see how athletes respond. So the, probably the, the biggest factor just from a repetition standpoint is that these frequent deloads give us lots and lots of practice at how to taper athletes correctly and effectively going into a competition. So without, without some practice, if, if let's say I'm just doing um, these, these deload weeks once every three months or once every 10 weeks or whatever it is, I, I get less opportunity to fine tune how that athlete responds to those reduced training loads and reduced intensity. Some athletes actually need to go a whole lot uh, less intense than what I managed, than I maintained during my deloads. Some athletes uh, do, a, do a much, much better job. Me in particular, if I, if I maintain that intensity through those easier weeks, I stay a lot sharper. So if I didn't have this repetition with my training that I have those deloads or just uh, reduced weeks that I, I would be less consistent when it comes to competition day. There's been a few competitions where I've, I've gone too light the week before and I've come in and I've just felt like the weights are really heavy and I don't have the, the same intensity that I had um, with, the, with the progressions before. So the, the last thing I think is that it also sometimes gives us a, an opportunity to maybe learn some things from the lifter. So there are a few lifters that I have that no matter what we do, whether we, we keep the volume a little bit higher, um, we, we go lower volume, lower intensity, we just play around with all of the variables. That athlete, on, on it takes them a while, uh, week, two, week one and week two of those, those progressions. They just come in and they feel a little sluggish. So we just know that, and, but, but they always perform well on the week three. They just always progress um, just how we would expect them to. So the thing that I've done with myself and other athletes in the past is that we don't necessarily have a defined taper week going to the competition, is that a lot of times if they've consistently performed very, very well on that third week of training, we use that third week of training as their competition week. So uh, we may be building week one, week two, and then week three, um, instead of going up and then week four would be taper and have the, the competition at the end. The end of week three is actually their competition date. If, if uh, in the past we've done this a number of times and on that week three they just crush it, then we expect that and we plan for that in their competitions and we can just um, get a little bit more consistency from it. So the, the, there's a couple of big factors why I have all these, these uh, why I set up the training the way that I do with the three weeks up and one week down is we just get a lot of opportunity to learn about lifters and how they respond to things. And then we get to, to have a lot of really, really good training. So instead of having a long extended block or it's 10 weeks long and I'm fatigued through a lot of it, I, I have these four week blocks where I know every, every fourth week or it's really the third week of the fourth week block that I really have to turn it on and go. And I think it's exciting for lifters. I think it keeps lifters involved and we get to expect some good training from them. So, uh, Hopefully that's a little bit that's informative about uh, how we can use deloads in training to continually to progress and and to make sure that our training is the way that it needs to be when we need it to be there. So if you have any questions about the the how I manage deloads a little bit more specifics, let me know. And and uh, thanks for watching. Subscribe to the channel. You can find me on Instagram at David Wilson or Brazos Valley Barbell. And see you next time.